Okay, welcome to a model a day in May. This is day five and I'm actually going to continue with this go scene uh, because what I want to do is I want to actually create the little uh, the little containers for the counters. So let's just turn this into a UV or an image editor. It used to be called the UV editor or the UV image editor. Now it's separate. There's an image one and a UV one. Uh, so I want to create these little pots and you know, this is really simple. Today is actually going to be a really, really fast video. I'm not going to spend a massive amount of time on this at all. Let's see what I want to do is I'm going to go to edit mode. I'm going to select it all and I'm going to move this up on the Z axis and just put the bottom of this right on the pivot point. And the reason I'm doing that is so when I move this or when I scale it, it actually scales down. To that point, so I'm just going to scale this down. Don't worry, I'm going to oh, let's see, scale on all axes. I'm going to reset the transforms on this when I need to. Now, just looking at this, I'm going to count from here and go one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is about six squares wide. So let's uh, look at this at a certain angle and try and scale this down. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six wide. So that's probably a, a round about the width of the pot. It's actually, it looks pretty big on the table compared to here, but in actually thinking about it, these pots are actually pretty big. As if you look at the amount of counters in those, and you look at the amount of counters that were on the table before, you know, we're gonna need quite big pots. So let's see, the first thing I want to do is let's round off the bottom. Now, these particular pots here, they have around this about that, and then maybe this point it starts to flatten out. So I'm going to take this line, I'm going to take this edge and split it. I'm going to take a face on the bottom, just increase my selection up. Let's see if we can get screencast keys to show up today. So uh, let's uh, increase that selection all the way up and just delete off these faces. Select this edge on the bottom. I'm going to isolate this. Um, added a little face in there. I'm going to bevel this bottom edge, control B and just add a few subdivisions in there. Uh, I want the bottom of it to be fairly flat. So that's going to be okay. Uh, let's unisolate this now so we can actually set it onto the table. I'm going to select all and just move this down until we're sitting on the table. Don't actually mind if it's a little bit off the table. Let's see, maybe about there. Let's uh, just look in this view to make sure we're sitting nice. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, so we cut off this edge, which I think is probably the equivalent of this edge. Uh, what I want to do is I want to add an extra one in here. I want it to be a little bit narrower at the top than it is at the bottom. So again, I'm just going to edge split. And let's uh, deal with the top here. So I'm not actually going to delete this off. I'm going to move it up and I'm going to select this ring around the edge and then I'm going to use control S, no sorry, shift S to put my cursor to selected which moves the 3D cursor into the median point of this edge loop. I'm going to change my transforms to the 3D cursor, select this whole area and then we can scale this down in Z and that'll actually just scale to this point and that way I can get a nice kind of flattened ring at the top. What I do want to do is I want to make the top super flat. I'm going to select this ring here, split that off, okay, uh, grab this top area, delete that off, select this edge and just flatten that out. Now, just to kind of clean this up a little bit, I'm going to insert this all the way into the center. I'm not going to add any edge loops. What I will do is that I'll go to vert mode. Just use Alt-M and merge at center. Now, yes, I've got triangles there. And yes, I could easily delete every second line here and make quads, but I'm not going to bother. Let's see what else I want to do. I think I want to just get the transition here a little bit 
neater. So uh, let's grab a vert here. Let's actually go to edge mode and grab this and go back to vert mode and then grab the center one. And then we can just move that down and make that even flatter. Uh, increase the selection size, grab this, make that even flatter. So this is really, really flat, like super flat. This edge, um, I'll scale it just a little bit. Grab this edge, I'm going to extrude this down a little bit. Go in Z. And we'll just grab this edge. And give this a little bevel. I think we'll give it a little bevel. Actually, should we do this in subdivision? We'll do this in subdivision. So what I mean by subdivision is we're going to do a subdivision surface modifier. Let's grab that face. Let's uh, inset this in a little bit. I want to inset to a certain point and then I'm going to actually extrude it down a little bit. And since we won't see the inside of this lid, I'm just going to leave it the way it is just now. I will inset it again once here and then once all the way to the center. Go to vert mode. Merge at center, and that's basically the basic lid. Now, what we want to do is we want to give this the lower part thickness. So I'm going to go to object mode. I'm going to select this. Actually, let's see. We'll go to this top part, and let's actually delete this off. So we're going to separate by selection. So now we have two objects. I'm going to get the lower object. Add a modifier. Solidify. We've already used this. Uh, earlier in the week. So take that to about there. I want the thickness of this kind of match this overhang here. I'm going to go to edit mode. Actually, I'm going to go to object mode, apply this and then go to edit mode. One uh, little thing about Blender is you can't actually, you can actually apply modifiers when you're in edit mode, which can sometimes throw you off a little bit. I'm going to snap this up to the top angle so this is totally flat. And now this lid should kind of fit on the top of this quite easily. I'm going to add in a subdivision surface modifier. Uh, we'll set it to 2 and 2. Actually, do you know what? We, we only really need one for the viewport. What I do need to do is grab this edge here and this edge here. And we need to add in some control loops. So a really, really quick way of adding in a control loop is actually by beveling something with three edges and then going into the bevel settings and changing the profile to one and that basically doesn't change the shape of the object it just adds in control loops and that can be really simple it's a really simple way of getting a good effect now we've got enough loops at the bottom here kind of control that and the inside of the pot well we're not going to see that so don't actually mind too much what that looks like I'll shade that smooth and that looks not too bad at all. I'm going to do the same here, subdivision surface modifier. Go into edit mode. I'm going to isolate this so I can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to grab all the loops that I need. Let me just hide this in the scene so I can just make sure I've got all the loops I want. Okay, so that one I do want to be pretty smooth. And again, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to bevel this a little bit. And make sure the profile is set to 1. Back to object mode. Make sure this subdivision surface is working fine. Uh, let's just double check our normals. Auto smooth. 80% should be fine. Let's just have a look. Uh, oh, do you know what? We've not shaded smooth this, have we? Or have we shaded it smooth? Let's uh, double check this modifier. Let's just increase that a little bit. It definitely actually looks as if... Yeah, let's just turn off this auto smooth. Okay. Let's unisolate this. And that's basically our little pot. Now we need to texture this. So I'm going to texture it with the same material I used for the actual board itself. So let's go into shading. Let's make sure our viewport is showing up. We'll use a, we'll not use Eevee for this. Now I'm looking through the camera here and you can see it's all blurry. That's because I chose to, in my renders yesterday, use a little bit of depth of field. 
just to play around with it a little bit. So I do need to grab my camera and then just turn off that depth of field. And I'll unlock this to the camera. This is probably a decent view of our object. Let's uh, apply the board material to it. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to call it this pot. Actually, we might as well call it pot lid because I've got a funny feeling we'll have to use slightly different settings on the lid than we do for the actual pot itself. Let's see, we have got texture coordinates set up here, but I think I want to try and sphere map this. Okay, so not what I want. We can adjust some of our rotation settings to see if we can get an effect we want. That's definitely not working, so sphere mapping's out. Let's try box mapping. That's definitely not going to work. Tube mapping? Nope. So again, I think we're going to be doing flat mapping. Uh, let's just take all these settings back to default so we can see where we're starting. Now, one thing we do have here is we have this set up for UVs, which is probably a mistake. Yes, we want it set up to object. That's much better. Let's just have a look around this object and see if we have any issues with uh, this texture, any strange artifacts, any strange blending. And I think that's actually working pretty well. The scale is a little bit off. I'll take that to 0.5. Let's see what it looks like in relation to the actual table. As the uh, is the grain of the wood too small? Is it too big? I think it's still too small. Let's take that to 0 0.2. And I think that's actually not too bad. I think we can actually deal with that. That's fine. Let's try the same material on this object and see what we get. Okay, so I don't like the way that's shown up on the end. Now, let me just have a quick look at the reference again. So we we'll open that image, look at these little pots. So it kind of seems like the way this is, is the, this pot in particular, is it looks like it's kind of made in the same way a barrel is made. So if you know the way a barrel is made, it's made up of all these planks that have been kind of bent round. Uh, so you have the grain going up the sides in all directions. And this you can see it's only going up the grain in this direction. When you go to this side, we get this kind of mess. So that's the kind of thing we want to do. Now, we might be able to box map this and get a similar effect. Okay, so here it's actually going around, which is actually quite nice. It looks pretty nice. Let's try rotating this by 90 degrees and see if we can get it going up the sides. So we have it going up the sides on one side. Let's try generated mapping. Sometimes you can get some strange results or some slightly different results by changing this setting. You know what, I think we might go with the around. Okay, so welcome back. So I just took a little bit of a break there to try and figure out how to use dynamics to fill this tub. And unfortunately, I'm not actually getting anywhere. Uh, the main thing that tends to happen is the counters fall. And despite this being a passive, rigid body, they just fall right through it, or on the occasions where they don't fall straight through it, they kind of bounce along inside it uh, for seemingly an infinite amount of time and don't stop and eventually either fall through anyway or fly out the sides and they don't really appear to be right next to each other the way I want. So I think what I'm going to do is instead of using the counters that I've already created and this tub that I've already created, I'm going to make brand new geometry and basically set up a simulation with some proxy objects and see if I can actually just use these objects and swap them in afterwards. So what I'm going to do now is just go to a new scene. I'm going to make sure this is saved and I'm just going to create a cylinder first of all. And I'm going to keep everything at basically default values here. I'm going to make sure the top is disappeared, so I'm going to just break that off, bases, and this is going to be the kind of proxy for the tub. So I'm just going to take this and move this down a little bit, apply something in the middle, and bevel this out so we've got a kind of general tub shape, similar to what we had before. I'll create a new object, 
I'm going to use a UV sphere. Uh, segments, I think we have far too many segments, so take that down to 16. Rings, take that to 8. Radius, we're going to make quite small, maybe around about this. Remember, we do have to try and match the sizes of things a little bit. Let's uh, scale this down in Z. That's more or less right. I'm going to go to object. What I do need to do is I need to uh, actually separate this object. So I've created that in edit mode. So separate by selection. Okay, and let's move this up. Now, in theory, the rigid body should work with this being single sided polygons. So let's have a look. First of all, we'll check our rigid body world settings. At the moment, we don't have add rigid body world. We will turn that on. We are just going to make sure our collection is set up. Everything is going to be in this default collection. Uh, let's see steps per second 60. Higher val values, more accurate, but slower. I'm going to go with 120 and solve the iterations. I'm going to go with 30. Cache, we will just make sure everything is deleted. Field weights. Okay, everything here we're going to ignore. We're just going to keep with the defaults for the moment. We'll go to rigid body. We'll add a rigid body to this object. Now it looks like everything is automatically been given that already. So go to passive. We're going to attempt to use the mesh on the tub and we will attempt to use the mesh on this as well. That's active mesh. Uh, the other thing I want to change is the margin. I'm going to take that to 0 0.01. And the same with this one, 0 0.001. And I'll just jump over to layout here. Uh, we are at frame zero. I'm going to hit play. Okay, and our counter lands in the tub. So that's exactly what we want. So I'll go back to zero. Let's uh, take this object. I'm going to shift D, duplicate that. Now in the top view, I'm just going to create a bunch of duplicates of this. These should all have the rigid body on them. I'll go to the front view. See through mode, duplicate, 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 duplicate. Okay, and let's see if this is going to work. So let's go back to solid mode. Just hit play. Okay, so a bunch of them landed in the tub and a bunch of them fell through. That is not terrible. It's not the best thing ever. It's not really filled the tub though. So let's go all the way back to zero. Let's take all of these and we're going to duplicate them. I think we need quite a few of these. Duplicate them. Now to make this a little bit more random, I'm going to select them all. I'm going to go to individual origins. And if we go to random here, can we actually just Grab one of these. So this selects everything. I'm just kind of move that a little bit and then kind of rotate it. You can see they're all rotating at a different amount. So uh, we do have some things intersecting there, which is probably going to cause an issue, but it might give us enough randomness. But uh, it gives us actually a good result. We do want to rotate this background. So let's have a go and let's see if this craziness is going to work. Okay, I'm going to hit pause. Okay, so a couple of things I do need to do. Let's grab some of these and we're going to delete. Oh, let's see. Let me just undo all that and play this again. There is something I forgot to do. Let's let these settle a little bit. Okay, pause there. I'm going to select all, go to object, rigid body, apply transformations. So now everything is applied. 
Again, rigid body, remove. So now nothing in the seam has a rigid body. We're going to grab everything that fell through and just delete that. Zoom in on the tab and then just delete any little outliers that we have. Actually, the ones at the bottom there we're not going to see. This one here, we can probably just move a little bit. Actually, you know what? I think we could get away with that as well. Okay, so we have our little tub full of objects. Now, this outside the tub, we don't need. We just need this little pile in here. I'm going to select this whole group, Control J and join this. I'm going to call this counter pile. Okay, now we need to save this file. So I'm just going to call this counter pile. Now we only have one object in this scene. If we go back to our go board now, and we'll just save, it should be saved anyway. Now we should, in theory, be able to append that other object into the scene. So object counter pile. Should it be mesh or should it be counter pile? Don't think it actually matters. So, I mean, straight away we can see exactly why the simulation that I tried earlier on failed. When I created everything at default, well, I suppose close to default sizes, everything appeared to work. But when I actually created it in this scene where everything is so much smaller, that's when I had issues. So, I guess that's a general tip to anyone looking to do some kind of transformations. It looks like uh, working to something very close to Blender's default sizes is probably going to work out a little better for you. But anyway, that appears to have worked quite well. Let's just try and get this into place. So this actually looks pretty decent. I think once I get this in the kind of general area that I want it to be, I should be able to just move some bits here and there and get a decent result. So obviously there are a couple of counters just poking through the sides that we'll probably want to remove. Now one thing I might do here is just uh, select all of these. In fact, before I select all of these, let's just bring over our actual real counter so we can see how that actually looks compared to these other ones. Uh, size wise, I think these ones are a little bit off. I'm going to select this, this, and this and scale this up a little bit. Okay, now a couple of these I want to get rid of, so let's go to edit mode. Select this one here. Just select all, delete faces. Uh, there's a, another couple that are kind of, kind of poking through. I want to get rid of as well. Let's uh, do this one as well. So now I'm just trying to kind of clean things up a little bit. Uh, let's select all and just scale this down a little bit so everything just comes away from the edges. And you know what? I quite like the look of that. That is pretty good. Uh, let's see. Now we can grab this. We can add on our subdivide surface modifier. It's going to take a while just because we have so many faces in there. Uh, shade smooth. And now we need to apply that material to them. So let's see, we need to go with our white counter. Okay. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now the one thing that I'm definitely aware of is the fact that the counters are a slightly different shape, but I'm hoping that's not going to be noticed. I'm hoping we can actually get away with that. So there we go. There is our tub of counters. Obviously, if we want to create the black tub, all we need to do is select our three objects. Shift D to duplicate those. We'll move them across. Here, we'll select these counters and we are going to apply the black material onto these. There we go. And there's our black one. Now, what I do want to do is I want to basically put these on the floor next to the object. I'll take this down. I'm going to rotate this around a little bit and move this up 
and kind of just place it against our object so it looks if it's stacked up. And we'll do the same with this one. Select the outside and the tub. Go to the front view. Move these down. And this time we will rotate this around this way. Don't want it to look exactly the same. Set that against that. I'll go into my top view. I'm actually going to grab this and this. And in fact, the whole thing. Rotate this around like this. Move that into place. This and this we can actually just get rid of. Now we want to basically unhide a load of stuff in the scene. We've got the whole room to unhide. Let's see everything else. I think it's actually already unhidden. Let's go into our camera view. What camera to cursor? Our pieces have all disappeared. Let's see if we can unhide those. There we go. Okay, great. Now we do we should have a background in this scene. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that's a little bit nicer than yesterday's render. Let's just quickly render that image out. And I think I did have my render settings quite high. Uh, plus, we did add all those subdivision surfaces with uh, some subsurface scattering. And you know what? Those two piles look different enough that I'm actually pretty happy with that. Okay, so I guess that's going to be our render for today. What I think I will do is I will I'll take a moment and I'll just put the tubs on the table on by themselves without any of these counters and do a render that way. And you'll see that in a moment.